Storms that we've been talking about for days rolling into central Georgia. You're looking live over downtown. We'll talk about what to expect here through the morning. Plus, central Georgia is preparing for some severe weather this morning, as Alex just mentioned. Next, the latest school closings. And our area isn't the only place looking out for the weather. Next, we'll show you winter weather hitting other parts of the country. 13 WMAZ morning starts right now. Good morning, everybody. It's January 9th at 5 a.m. I'm Frederick Price. As we've been talking about all week long, we are tracking the threat for severe weather this morning. Let's get straight to meteorologist Alex Forbes in the 13 WMAZ Weather Center. Alex, what's the latest? Yeah, good morning, Frederick. We are tracking a line of storms that's moving in as we speak, and that's what's prompting a lot of the changes that's coming in central Georgia today. In central Georgia right now, we're looking at a handful of showers. Saw some rain through the overnight, but there is a lot more where that came from. Take a look at this back into the state of Alabama. You can see some of this running uh, a little ahead of schedule in terms of the storms out ahead of it and a little more potent than what was initially forecasted there. So coming across the Alabama state line here, what you see there is actually going to slide up towards Atlanta. You see that motion there. We're going to be watching what's down into Alabama and the Florida Panhandle this morning for uh, impacts here in central Georgia. Tornado watch now comes up to the Georgia state line. A handful of tornado warnings in and around the Mobile area. What I'm watching most closely is uh, let me actually hop back to that real quick is the storms that you see on the Alabama Florida line right there out and ahead of that because those storms have been rotating this morning. All right, now let's get to the timeline here. So with the tornado threat, uh, it, it's going to be low on the scale. Don't get me wrong here from 7 to about 1 p.m. Going to be watching for that. What I'm more concerned about today is the damaging wind threat as that actual line pulls through. All of this boils down to a level three severe weather threat. Uh, roughly the same area we were talking about yesterday from southern Hancock down through Wilkinson, Twiggs, Peach, Houston and Taylor County and points southward a level two elsewhere. But let's get into the weeds here and talk about why that's in place. The big driver is this the wind outlook. Not only do we have, uh, you know, have up the scale here up to 30%. We also have this outlined highlighted area of 75 plus miles an hour winds from the Storm Prediction Center and then down to the south and west, the potential for strong tornadoes as well. EF2 strength are stronger. So we're going to keep an eye on it all. Again, looking live over downtown. Temperatures continuing to warm up. We'll talk a lot more in just a few moments. All right, thank you, Alex. So many schools announcing closures for or, or work for a home day ahead of these storms. Take a look at your screen. Jones, Dooley, Telford, Wilcox counties, also Dodge, Hancock, Wheeler, Trutland, and Monroe counties, and another list of districts are moving instruction to online today. Bibb, Baldwin, Johnson, and Macon counties, also Twiggs, Washington, and Wilkinson counties. 13 WMAC weather, sponsored by Premier Heating and Air. 506 this morning. Let's head back over to meteorologist Alex Forbes, who's tracking this latest potential threat of storms. Alex. Yeah, Frederick, you can see it downtown. The camera shaking in the wind. This is non thunderstorm wind, and it's going to be a problem all day long. And in fact, we'll talk about it more in a minute. It's actually the reason why many of the school districts are closed today in central Georgia is because the buses can't operate when the wind is over 40 miles an hour. All right, let's get to the radar here and talk about what's going on. Obviously, not a lot in central Georgia right now. A handful of showers after an overnight of rain. You look back into Alabama and there's there's plenty more where that came from storms covering up really the eastern two thirds of the state here. You can see some lightning strikes now on the Georgia state line, but I want to draw your attention down to the south here because the storms that we see in southern Alabama and the Florida Panhandle are actually what's going to be arriving first in central Georgia. What you see back to the north there in parts of the Montgomery area and then up towards Birmingham, that's actually going to slide closer to Atlanta. We are watching what's down here, and that is again the area that we're watching for potentially some uh, some tornado activity out of that. In fact, a handful of tornado warnings right now in the Mobile area and severe thunderstorm warnings as well. Let's uh, uh, get on over to the storm outlook for today. So a level three in place from Hancock County. This is going to be down through Wilkinson, Twiggs, uh, Southern Bibb, over towards Peach and Macon counties and points southward. So this includes Dublin, Cochrane, Eastman, Unadilla, Wrightsville, Soperton, McRae, Abbeville, Perry, Cordial, Hawkinsville, places like that. A level two in place just to the north of that. Now, I don't want you to be distracted by this level three and say, oh, we're in the level two. It doesn't matter. Well, level two is still a level two, and I'll break down the details on why you're in that in just a moment. But Eatonton, Milledgeville, Gray, Macon, Forsyth, Bowling Broke, Roberta, Reynolds, uh, everybody, uh, Thomas and Butler included within that one. All right, let's go into uh, the, the, the next layer of the outlook, if you will. The, the reason why we've got the one, two, three in place across central Georgia. Well, what's prompting the three is not only are we now at the 30% threshold for the uh, the wind uh, you know outlook here across central Georgia, but we also 
have this black highlighted area over central Georgia, which is for winds over 75 miles an hour. As we work our way through the morning hours, that's going to be thunderstorm wind gusts. We're going to have additional wind on top of that. And then the tornado outlook here, not too much of a change from yesterday, but still down to the south. Dooley, Wilcox, Chris County is included in uh, the, the next level up on the tornado outlook, but then also went back and highlighted by the Storm Prediction Center for potentially what they call significant severe, which is EF2 plus tornadoes. All right, so here's the lay of the land, and this is what we've been watching for through the overnight hours, and uh, we've seen this continue to change. So when I came to work this morning, it was 51 degrees. Now it's 57 in Macon. It's 61 in Unadilla, 60 in Rochelle, indicative of this wind we've got in place eroding the wedge away. So I think confidence is increasing that we are going to see this severe weather. The 24 hour temperature change. How does 25 degrees warmer in Macon sound? All right, so here are the details here by 7 a.m. I'm going to be watching for a handful of storms out ahead of the main line. The main line beginning to come across the Georgia state line by 9 a.m. Here it comes in central Georgia from Upson, Lamar and Taylor counties. Play this forward to 10 o'clock crossing Interstate 75 here. Now keep in mind we're talking about you know a, a late morning early afternoon event for us, but in Upson County and Taylor County by 10 o'clock as the severe threat's going to be over. As soon as this main line comes through, it's going to end at your house. So by noon, the severe threat over in Macon, Warner Robins, Unadilla, but just are now arriving in Wrightsville, Dublin. Eastman and then by 1 2 o'clock getting on out of here of central Georgia. So the timeline boils down like this. We'll really begin to watch for that tornado threat pick up around 7 a.m. But that is secondary to the damaging wind threat that we're going to have here through the late morning and early afternoon hours. And I'm actually going to carry that to about the noon hour and then also on top of that could pick up some additional rainfall as well. Now outside of the storms today still going to be windy 20 to 30 mile an hour sustained winds gusts up to 45. So even without the storms, uh, you know, we, we would be looking at a windy day and that is in Indeed, what we're going to see through the afternoon. So 65 today with 100% chance of rain, 53 tomorrow. We will actually clear out later on today, as you saw in future view. We will see some sun by the time we get into the four or five o'clock hour, but then potentially some more storms for Friday. We have already been added into an outlook for that one as well. We'll talk more about that coming up in a little bit. It's 515. Let's go over to Alex for a quick look at the storms he's tracking. Yeah, Frederick, that's right. We've got a tornado watch now up against the Georgia state line. The level three in place today. We'll map out the details of what to expect as we head into the later morning hours. Well, already a breezy morning across central Georgia, kind of the writing on the wall for what's to come later this afternoon. Sustained right now in Macon at 70 miles an hour, obviously seeing gusts higher than that. But I also want to point out that temperature 57. It has warmed up significantly even since uh, just when I came into work, and that's kind of the writing on the wall for our atmosphere becoming a little more destabilized. We are seeing some showers now on the Upson Taylor County line. This is not the main line coming through just yet, but still some lightning strikes with it. Nonetheless, we look back into Alabama and that's what you're going going to find the main line there from Calera just south of the Birmingham area down towards Mobile this morning. And in fact, down there looking at a handful of tornado warnings and then down into the Florida Panhandle. This is what I'm actually watching for us here in central Georgia. This is going to be from the Crestview area over towards the Funiac Springs, Mariana. These storms have been rotating. They've had a handful of warnings on them, and these are what are actually going to slide up towards central Georgia first. The severe weather outlook for today, again, a level three for many of us. This is going to be from uh, Hancock and Washington counties down through Twiggs, Wilkinson, Peach, uh, Houston County, Macon County points southward and then a level two elsewhere across central Georgia. The threat today primarily for damaging winds, but then also that secondary tornado threat as well across the area. Let's first talk about this wind threat. Again, the highest chance of that uh, is going to be in that red shaded area there in that same area that's in the level three. But not only that, the Storm Prediction Center went back around and took a highlighter and said, all right, Everything inside this black dashed area has the chance of seeing a significant severe weather event, which is winds over 75 miles an hour on the, the wind outlook. Something similar here on the tornado outlook. They went back with that highlighter for uh, you know, some parts of Dooley County, Crisp County, Wilcox County, and said not only do you have an increased chance of seeing a tornado, but that tornado could be on the stronger side of things at EF2 strength or stronger. So let's map out the details here on future view. The, the rain and storms and all of that we have got coming through here over the next little bit. It, again, is not the main line that will arrive around nine o'clock this morning, but still 
I'm going to be watching to see if any of these storms out ahead of it, like what we saw down in Florida, are capable of producing tornadoes. And then from 9 to about 1 o'clock, it's going to take that entire time for these storms to roll through central Georgia. So that doesn't mean it's going to storm at your house for that entire time. It just means it's going to go from, you know, Upson County and Taylor County all the way over towards Trutland and Lawrence County. The storm should last about 30 to 45 minutes. So watching that tornado threat this morning, but I'm more concerned about the damaging wind threat as that has the potential to be stronger. 65 going to be that high temperature today. And once we get this out of here by 2, 3, 4 o'clock, we will actually mix in some sun. Cooler tomorrow, 53, 62 for Thursday. Some storms again on Friday with a 70% chance of rain there. And then another rain chance at about 40% by the time we get to next Monday. Now at 530, it's the day we've been watching for quite a while. Now storms beginning to roll into central Georgia. The wind already taking place. We'll talk about what to expect through the next several hours. And central Georgia is preparing for some severe weather this morning. Next, we'll tell you what you need to know for school closures and virtual learning days. Plus, are you prepared if a severe weather emergency hits? Next, we'll give you some tips on what you need to keep you and your family safe. 13 WMAZ morning starts now. Good morning, everybody. It's January 9th. We're back at 530. I'm Frederick Price. As Alex just alluded to, we are tracking the threat for severe weather this morning. We're going to get straight to him in the Weather Center. Alex, what's the latest? Yeah, Frederick, beginning to see some showers and storms roll into central Georgia right now, but this is not the main line. That's going to come later on this morning, and that's what's prompting a level three severe weather day for us. We zoom it out and look back into Alabama. There's the main line there. That's going to be from uh, actually now just to the east of the Birmingham area, about to roll into Montgomery, and then down into Mobile. That's where they actually have a severe thunderstorm warning and a tornado warning down there. And then another warning uh, down, uh, that looks like uh, Fort Walton Beach, that area down there. But what I'm watching most closely is actually the storms that you see here from southeastern Alabama back down through the Florida Panhandle because those are going to arrive first in central Georgia. And those I've been rotating this morning and it's kind of what's been prompting this uh, level three event, not only from that tornado standpoint, but more specifically from the damaging wind standpoint as we get into the afternoon when that main line comes through upwards of 75 miles an hour. That's going to be a possibility across central Georgia. On top of that, we obviously saw some rain through the overnight hours. Our ground uh, not very saturated because we haven't seen a ton of rain in the past several months. So anything we do get has a higher likelihood of becoming runoff. So flooding also going to be a concern today as well. So here's this level three not really changed from yesterday. This is going to be from Hancock County down through Twigs and Wilkinson, Houston Peach, Taylor County points southward. The threat for damaging winds and tornadoes. You just saw the timeline there. More specifically, I'm watching this damaging wind threat today. This black outlined area is where we have the best chance of seeing winds over 70. 75 plus miles an hour. We're going to go hour by hour on future view so you can see the forecast for your specific city and when all of this gets out of here, it comes up in just a few minutes. All right, Alex, we'll see you in a bit. Well, many schools today, but first it is 538 all morning long. We've been tracking the threat for potential storms, so let's head back over to meteorologist Alex Forbes with the latest. Alex. Yeah, good morning, Frederick. You can see it behind me. The wind across central Georgia. This is not tied to any type of thunderstorm activity right now. It's just a windy morning, and it's kind of the writing on the wall for what's to come later on today with a southerly breeze as we look live over downtown. Southeast at 17 miles an hour sustained, a temperature of 57, which is several degrees warmer than from when I came into work just a few hours ago. So uh, temperatures warming up, our atmosphere becoming more destabilized. And as we work our way through the morning hours, that's the writing on the wall for some of these storms. Now, this is not the line of storms right here. This is kind of some of that activity out ahead of it that we are not expecting uh, to uh, decrease the severe weather risk as it comes through. So, uh, you know, Upson County, you're catching a fairly uh, good rainfall right now. It's going to move into Monroe County here the next little bit, Taylor County into Crawford County over the next little while. We look back into Alabama and we run into some more warning. So a flash flood warning now over the Montgomery area down to the south. Severe thunderstorm warnings for parts of southern Alabama. A handful of tornado warnings that's going to be across the bay from Mobile and then another one. Uh, uh, actually two of them now on the Florida Panhandle. And what I'm actually watching are these storms here because you see the general motion on them lifting up towards this. Well, you go far enough north and what do you run into? Taylor, Macon, Dooley and Crisp counties. And that's actually one of the areas that the Storm Prediction Center has outlined for a fairly substantial 
substantial tornado risk today. So the writing on the ball, everything going according to plan at the moment. Today we are in this level three severe weather risk for most of central Georgia from Hancock County down through Wilkinson Twigs, a uh, clipping southern bib there, but mo all of Houston County, Peach County, uh, southern Taylor County and points southward. So this is going to include Perry, Hawkinsville, Unadilla, down towards Cordial, Dublin, Dexter, over towards Soperton, McRae, Alamo going to be included within that, Wrightsville and Sandersville. A level two just to the north, this is going to include most of Bibb County as well as Crawford, Monroe, Jones, Putnam, most of Hancock, Baldwin, over towards Lamar and Upson counties as well. That's not to say you're not going to see severe weather there. It's just that the threat is going to be slightly higher down to the south. I do think the primary driver today is going to be that damaging wind threat. Secondary is going to be that tornado threat. So let's talk about it. The damaging wind threat. This is actually what's prompting the level three right now. So you can see we're fairly high up there on the scale. We got that red swath across much of central Georgia. Not only do we have that, but the storm prediction center went back around with a highlighter and said, all right, everything within this black dashed area has the chance of a significant severe event, which means winds could top 75 miles an hour. They did something similar with the tornado outlook as well. This 5% uh, here is kind of your run of the mill severe weather tornado outlook whether you get down to 10% down towards Dooley and Crisp counties. A significant severe highlight over that as well. So I'm going to be watching down there, especially here in the early morning hours to see if we get any activity into parts of southwestern Georgia. Let's time it out now. Here's future view by 7 a.m. You can see a smattering of showers. Again, we are not expecting this to you know, stabilize our atmosphere. We are still expecting the storms, the, the main line to arrive around 9 a.m. in uh, Upson and Taylor counties and then come across Interstate 75, making Warner Robins, Perry, Unadilla right around 10 a.m. Now at this time, you know, Thomas and Butler, the event is over for you. So I know we're saying one, two o'clock for it ending. Well, it's actually going to end for you at 10, 11 o'clock. This line continues to move off to the east. Here we are at the noon hour moving into Eastman, Dublin, uh, over towards McRae. The event now over in Macon, Warner Robins, Unadilla, and then by later on this afternoon, it'll get out of here and we will be rain free by about three o'clock. So here's how it boils down on the timeline. We're watching the tornado threat this morning, but I'm more concerned about this, this damaging wind threat from about 8 a.m. to noon today as that main line comes through central Georgia. Here's your seven day forecast. We've got that 100% chance of rain today. There's no way around it. The cooler tomorrow 53 going to be that high temperature there. Then once we get toward the end of the week, temperatures on the uphill swing again, a 70% chance of rain for Friday and Frederick. We've already got an outlook drawn for Friday across central Georgia. It's 551 this morning. Let's head back over to Alex with a look at some storms entering central Georgia later today. Yeah, that's right. We are beginning to see some rainfall right now, but I want to emphasize again that this is not the main event here in central Georgia. So the rain you're seeing in Lamar, Upson, Crawford County, Taylor County, not only is it not the main event, it's not going to save us necessarily, if that's the right uh, terminology for it, for what's going to come later on this morning. So we look back into Alabama, obviously a lot of activity down there. This tornado watch comes right up to the Georgia state line, a handful of tornado warnings down in the Mobile area, including uh, now over in the Florida Panhandle, and I'm going to be watching what you see from the Dothan area back down through the Florida Panhandle into the Gulf of Mexico to arrive in central Georgia here in the next two to three hours, and that's going to be really our first uh, hint of severe weather across central Georgia. So watching it all this morning, we'll get another check of the seven day forecast and what to expect for the rest of the week when we come back here at 5 a.m. Alex. Yeah, Frederick today 65 going to be that high temperature and obviously we've got the storms coming this morning, but later this afternoon we are going to see the sun, believe it or not. 53 much cooler tomorrow, 62 for Thursday and then for Friday another chance of storms at about 70%. Yes, we've already got an outlook drawn up with that one as well. So going to be watching for the threat of strong storms there before we begin to cool off here through the weekend. Look at that overnight lows down into the 20s by the time we get to Saturday, Sunday and Monday. We're going to continue to track the storms here this morning, coming back here at 6 a.m. with the latest on the radar. With going on down to the southwest of us and what to expect here through the morning hours across central Georgia.
652. Now let's head back over to Alex with a check of the weather. Yeah, Frederick, a couple of things now. So uh, I mentioned just a few minutes ago, the Storm Prediction Center are expecting to fill in a uh, tornado watch for parts of southwestern Georgia, which will come up into central Georgia oh, over the next hour or so, expecting that to come out. We also now have another tornado warning that's going to be on the, the, the Dothan area on the Georgia state line. So all of this to say, what you see down here is what's coming towards central Georgia later on today and even more severe storms as that main line continues to move toward the east as the sun now begins to come up, expecting this to pick up some energy. And then actually right there, here you go. Another new tornado warning there. So all of that to say, expecting a busy morning here in central Georgia as you head out to work and school, make sure you have a way to get weather alerts. We'll keep you updated here on 13 WMAZ. All right, yeah, Frederick, we've got a handful of tornado warnings down to the south and west. These are going to be lifting towards central Georgia here in the hours to come. A level three severe weather risk in place today because of that across central Georgia. We're going to be keeping a close eye on it. Meteorologist Alex Pry is here with me now. We'll be monitoring this here through the morning hours and into the early afternoon. Stay tuned with us on air and online. CBS Mornings coming up next.